Cool. Fire emblem. Engage. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, choosing female leader, uh, what's her name? All right, let's take a look at that bid war. We will also be closing out the birth date incentive. Yeah, right afterward. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got Pepsi Man at $1,441.37 coming in first. Ooh Woo was a pretty close second. Shout out to the wolf. Oh, wrong. Yep. <laughs> All right, so birthday. The birthday is August 13th. So 8.13 is the winner of the birthday. Woo! Right. So normal, uh, classic, fix gross, unconnected. I will start in five. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So. Right. This is Fire Emblem Gage. Uh, the newest Fire Emblem came out in January. Do you want to talk about more about Kirby? Yeah, uh, this game is kind of a celebration or an anniversary game of like all the past Fire Emblems. So there's constantly like references and stuff to all the heroes of all the past games. Right now we we're setting up a bazillion options to turn off animations, and we I have the tutorial fight. teaching that this is a turn-based game. We have a player phase and an enemy phase, and this is also a tutorial on engage rings. So in this tutorial we have the Marth engage ring, and when your engage meter is filled, you can engage for three turns, which gives you certain stat buffs, abilities, and you can use your engage attack. In this case, it's going to be Load Star Rush, which will finish off the boss in this tutorial right here. And there we go. Woo, Pepsi Band! Woo! Yes. Woo! Guess we should inter introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Claris, I'm the runner. I'm Kirby Master, I run Fire Emblem, but not this one. I'm Elisara, I'm a longtime friend of Claris's. We also have Lucina, and Corin and we Edelgard, and Byleth. Yep. And Torchic as a guest star. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was all like some kind of dream or something. I don't remember the game explains it, but this is the first real map, and the premise is that right. we are the, the, a leader to Divine Dragon. We just woke up from a 1,000-year slumber. We don't know what's going on, but we're trying to protect all of our retainers. Um, by the end of turn two, we're trying to get as much experience as we can in Dodge Tank um, and try to get as many kills as we can before turn three, where the game will have a scripted cutscene that gives us the Marth Emblem for real. We're going to be engaged to Marth and then finish off the map. The objective of this map is to route, which means defeat all enemies on the map. And all Claris is going to have to do is just camp a Leer into the forest. Sync with Marth. And when you're synced with Marth, you get, uh, I think it's called Divine Speed. I don't remember off the top of my head. Which basically gives you an extra third attack at half power. And there we go. So level ups are a thing in this game, as for RPG games. Um, normally, when a character levels up, they have a percentage chance to gain a stat per a point in each stat. In the leader's case, I think it's like 35% strength or whatever, for example. Um, we are running this game in fixed gross mode, which means that they are not random. Instead, all of her level ups will stick to her averages, give or take. So there is no luck involved with her level ups. But that does mean that the experience requirements are very tight. We want her to hit level 11 before we reclass her in the mid-game. Yeah, what we just had was an exploration segment where after every battle, you get to explore the battlefield afterward and go around and collect items, talk to people. We're basically never going to do that, except for one single chapter later in the run. Just mm -hmm. immediately skip through to exploration every other time. All right, so auto-battling is a mechanic in this game. It basically lets you have the AI move all your units for you, which is way faster doing it behind a black screen than doing it manually. And this is a map that introduces the weapon triangle as well. By the way, that's Lumera, our mom. Uh, we have to defeat her twice in this map to finish the map. Um, so the weapon triangle is a traditional staple in Fire Emblem. Swords beat axes, axes beat lances, lances beat swords. We're using swords primarily for the early game. And, but unlike past games where being, having a weapon triangle advantage gives you statistical benefits, in this game it doesn't give you any at all. But if you initiate an attack on, say, an axe user in this case, you break them, which means they cannot counter you and they will not counter on the next round of combat, which is very useful, but very bad if we get attacked by lance users. Did you uh, note? Quick note, the Divine Dragon looked at her. Congratulations. So I yeah. just got my first bond level. Uh, this will be important to build up bond levels for some emblems. They basically increase the skills you have, the stats they give, etc. Yeah, Marth is a very useful emblem ring in the early game, not only because he's our only option, but also because he gives a lot of benefits to strength, dexterity, and speed. 
Strength is obviously more damage. Speed means you dodge more and you can double attack more often. Dexterity gives you better hit rates and crit rates, which is also very important for reliability. Yeah, so coming up is chapter three, which is actually one of the least reliable chapters in the entire run, because uh, I'm going to do most of it with Alir, and uh, she has to face a lot of Lance users who can break her. And so if they break her, I can't counterattack, which is I a huge fight. problem. Mm -hmm. So the strat is basically pray that the enemy eye works out. If not, then you just you dodge them out and pray. And if it doesn't work out, you burn a few turns and hope for the best. So fingers crossed. Yes, Scott, that's, that's the right pattern we want to see. Yeah. So now Olir can go ahead and finish off the Lance Flyer. Not yet. No, they're in the bad position. Oh, that. Oh, those are okay. So there's still a lot of luck to go, but I got past the first part of the map. Which is all right. Hmm. So we're going to go ahead and load Star Rush the boss, who's an armor knight. Um, we have access to the rapier when engaged with Mars, which is effective against armored and mounted units. We're not going to see it too often, but that's one case where it's nice. This Ooh, is uh, okay. Oh, okay. I got God. the perfect luck here. So yeah, all those Lance Flyers just died because Alir just decided to dodge Lamau and not get broken at all. So that, this is pretty much ideal. Yep. And that's the end of the chapter. And then Alir's mom dies. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, there's a bit for the next chapter, so now would be a good time for some donations. Absolutely, Clarissa, got you covered. We have a $250 donation from Bear Fighter MK2 that says, Good luck on the run, Clarissa. Seeing Engage being run at SGDQ's gotten me motivated to finish routing and completing a run with taters that doesn't take me <laughs> eight hours to complete. Donation goes to the runner's choice. Thanks. We've also got a $50 donation from KT80 that says, so excited for the Fire Emblem run. Have time for one more? Yeah. We have a $150 donation from Cerulean that says, Engage was one of my favorite games this year, but I haven't had a chance to see a speed run of it yet. Looking forward to being blown away. Oh, you will be blown away, especially late game. So yeah, the Somnio is kind of a base that you can enter in between chapters, which we have access to. It's a hub. We're skipping it as much as possible because it's slow. Um, so this next map is a defeat boss chapter, and it's, the boss is another Armor Knight in the upper right corner. Armor Knights are allergic to magic, and Alir does not use magic yet. So we're going to use one of our mages, Clan, to take out the boss. But also we have, we have Sigurd from Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War Sigurd. as our second Emblem Ring. His advantage is that he gives you a lot of mobility, so when you engage to him, he gives you plus five movement, which is really huge. Yeah, you'll be able to see how much his movement buff uh, helps a lot here mm -hmm. in getting Clan over there. Meanwhile, she's, Claris is going to move Alir on top of this village without visiting it to basically get some extra experience because, again, experience routing is very tight. Whee! And that <laughs> so, uh, how, how many tiles was that? Can someone in the donations, can someone donate how many tiles that was? Thanks. So yeah, that's how much movement you get from Sigurd. It's pretty great, isn't it? Yeah, so what I just did is called the slingshot glitch where there's a glitch with uh, Sigurd and Roy in certain circumstances. They give you increased movement when you engage. And there's kind of a way to break that. And uh, unfortunately, it was patched out in the latest version of the game. So I'm running on 1.3, while the latest is version 2.0. Um, but yeah, we're going to see it again next chapter. So. Yeah, the idea behind the slingshot glitch is that when you, you, you when you're using direct controls and then you engage um, directly, then you can manipulate Sigurd. the game into drawing a cursor path within their unengaged movement. And when you attack someone for whatever reason, you will move that arrow path twice for whatever reason. It's more complicated than that, but that's basically the gist of it. Yeah, I don't know why you follow it twice. <laughs> it, you just you just do. do. But you do need to have an emblem ring that gives you more mobility when you are engaged to it, which in this case is Sigurd, and as our only option. Yeah. So we're going to use it this chapter, but then you won't see it again for a very long time, because uh, the game already gives you so many tools at the time it takes to set up the glitch. And in the early game, at least having to use Sigurd, who is fairly weak for combat, it just makes it not worth using glitch more than Here I do. Goes. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Uh. Whee! Whee! All right, skip the door. So we also have Saline, yes. another mage, who is engaged to Celica from Fire Emblem Guidance or next? Fire Emblem Echo Shadows of Valencia. 
Oh, congrats to them. Uh, Clara's also moved Boucheron in range to bait enemies away from Saline because we don't want Saline to get attacked. So when you have Celica as your engage ring, you can use Warp Ragnarok, which just happened behind a black screen with auto battle. Warp Ragnarok allows you to teleport up to 10 tiles away to attack someone with Ragnarok. So that's why Saline is auto suddenly at the top of the map where the boss is. This if chapter I also can, introduces I Revival should. Stones, which is basically extra uh, health bars. Ah, got the bad luck. So, we're gonna learn about the Time Crystal. Time Crystal lets you rewind. Um, so if something goes wrong, you rewind oh, and Lord. you burn random numbers and hope for a better result. Because we need Saline to dodge. So, uh, hope she dodges this time. She did not. <laughs> Alright, okay. attempt number three. Let's go. Yeah, so, uh, this, this strat I do is pretty risky, but I just want to do it anyway, so... Here until uh, the it's end. faster, so I take the risk. And unfortunately, this time it... It's sure Attempt it's not four. Really <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not even tired. Ooh, oh, 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 she dodged. <laughs> she on. dodged. You're not saying. <laughs> okay, okay, there okay. we go. Well, I think that's like a what? what Fifty-five percent chance to get hit, roughly. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it's. Oh well. I mean, uh, it, it's like three slightly rigged coin flips that we failed, but you know, it's speed running. It's a marathon. Yeah. Uh, probably have time for another donation here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've got some pretty zappy donations for you coming Holy up here. broccoli. I've got a $25 donation from Nick O that says, a big hiya papaya in honor of our best girl, Yunaka, to Claris as she plays Fire Emblem Engage. Good luck and go fast. Woo! Thanks. And then if I, I could, we have one more that I'd really love to get. Oh, we've got a $15 do donation from Alfred's Muscles to strength <laughs> also to this awesome speed run of Engage. I adored this game when it launched and found myself loving the gameplay and all of the characters. Good luck and have fun. So are there any Yunaka fans in, in the crowd? Woo. I want to hear a high of papaya from all of you because we're about to see some Yunaka action here. All right, everybody. High of papaya. One, two, three. Hiya papaya. papaya! All right, so this is a fog of war map, uh, meaning you can't see past a certain number of tiles. And in this game, you cannot move into a tile you cannot see, which is why Yunako will be very important because she's a thief, so she has extra vision. And so normally this map is kind of split into two halves. We have Alir and Yunako in the top, and you're supposed to deploy the rest of your units at the bottom. Claris just undeployed all of them because they're not going to do anything since we want speedruns to be as simple as possible. So basically, Yunaka Claris here. is just moving Yunaka and Alir towards the boss in the upper left corner. Not much else going on here until the very end, so I think we can squeeze in one quick donation here. Absolutely. I've got a donation, $50 donation from Silent Sword that says to all the staff, volunteers, commentators, and runners, thank you for a great week. Let's finish strong. And by the way, everybody, we're over $1.3 million right now. Let's keep it going. So we haven't talked about Mikaya, who is from Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, um, the second Tellius game. Mikaya is the engage emblem that we just got introduced to. She's a staff-based emblem. We're not going to talk right. too much about the saves, but she did just use Great Sacrifice, which heals everyone on the map, but reduces Yunaka's HP down to one. So this looks really dangerous. But all the enemies are going to... Wait, was that too early? Yeah, why yeah, did okay, I do that? I was that? about to say, <laughs> I think that was a turn early. Yeah, all I, right. I... Whoops. Are strong. That's fine. All right, so the it's bosses are on that pile. Yeah, this is RNG manipulation. Don't worry about it. To totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so as I was saying, every, every unit is just in class, and classes go into different archetypes. So there are classes Here called goes. backup classes, which allow them to chain attack. And the AI really prioritizing act prioritizes, prioritizes activating chain attacks over killing units. So those two units can easily kill Yunaka, but they rather attack Alir because the boss, who is a backup unit, can perform chain attacks on Alir. Ooh. So they're all just attacking Alir right now instead of and ignoring the one HP Yunaka. And this AI manipulation, whatever you want to call it, is a very important factor to in the routing of this game. Yep. It's especially convenient because Yunaka dying there would be a really big problem. Yeah, you could see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, that ends the Firene section of the game. So, uh, no, I'm doing this chapter early. I'm supposed to do that next chapter. Uh, so now we're moving into Brodia. And Brodia has uh, three maps in a row with flying bosses. Mm -hmm. So what, what's good against flyers in, the, in Fire Emblem? Bows. Uh, who's going to join us in the first map of Brodia who can use a steel bow with OK base stats? Alchrist. 
Uh, he's going to be really handy for the next three maps because um, bows are good against flyers. His steel bow one-shots most of these bosses. All of them. All of them. Okay. All three of them. Yep, they do have one revival stone each, meaning they have two health bars, but like, it's fine. In this map's case, Hortensia, who is a flyer, um, she's an auto in the right side of the map, and it's really annoying to get to her because of all the terrain in the way. So the next best thing to do is to get her to fly to us, which is a lot easier because she flies. So what Clarissa is going to do here is use Celica's um, Warp Ragnarok ability coming up here Whatever and you put say. Fram in, the, in range of Hortensia. Fram, sh don't worry, she'll be fine. Asterisk. Yeah, uh... Fram will be able to solo bust the enemies over here by herself. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh, tried. oh, 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 oops. She tried. All right, so now on oh. this turn, Clarice is going to put Alcris in range of Hortensia's two range, coming up soon. So Alcris will counterattack Hortensia to, to take out her first health bar on the enemy phase. Not this one, but the next one coming up. I'll manage. While farming experience on Alir, because again, we really want Alir to hit level 11. L me? Yeah. Uh, Hortensia's movement is a bit random, so I did have to move Alcris an extra time, but yeah. I'll do my best. Now we just finished the boss off. Good job, Alcris. That's it. MVP all, Chris. Let's go. Cool. All right, so this next map coming up is the second of the trio of Brodia maps, and it's kind of designed to be like a defend map, but you can also end it by defeating the boss, who is surprisingly close. And her name is Ivy. We're going to fight Ivy in two chapters in a row. Um, and we're going to do something we similar where Clarissa is going to try to bait Ivy what immediately on turn one so she can finish Ivy on turn two. Ooh, the bond fragments. It just saves like a single pop up. <laughs> Did you know bond conversations are available? Um, speaking of bond conversations, we should see what our donation comments. And that's a terrible segue. Anyway, <laughs> really donations. Trust me, Claris, no better than my uh, start of my shift, so you, you're fine. You've got a $25 donation from Chaotic Kayana that says, Greetings from Ireland, a fabulous event as always. Can I get a trans rights from the audience, Chef? Woo! We've also got a quick $500 donation from Anonymous with no comment, but wow. that's, that's, all you need to, that's all you need to do. All right. So we just got Roy. We're not going to use him this chapter, but he will be important later. For now, what Clarice is doing is moving Alir to use Sigurd's override ability to get as much experience as possible while also baiting enemies away from Alcris, who's going to use you. a Warp Ragnarok to warp into Ivy's range. He's going to counterattack Ivy at two range to take out her health bar. All the enemies are going to attack Alir because, again, there's a backup enemy you know, right next to her, so they're all going to attack Alir instead of Alcris due to how the AI works. Ooh, I failed to uh, take out an enemy. Hopefully that doesn't cost me. Um, we got the secret book there. It's convenient. It doesn't cost much time. It's plus two dexterity, which is plus four hit. We want reliability. Stat boosters are good. And there we go. All crisp again. MVP. Woo! Right, so now it's going to be my first trip to the Somnial. Um, so, uh, like, the Somnial is a base of operations. You can do a bunch of various things there, most of which are not helpful for a speedrun. So... What are you talking about? Push-ups for plus two strength, which get does which doesn't stack with cooking anyways, or tonics. Yeah. So, um, first of all, we're gonna go donate the Brodia. Uh, we're gonna give them uh, forty thousand gold, which will uh, have various effects. The only one we care about is that it will uh, increase the. Uh, amount of ingots you get during exploration, which I will take advantage of next chapter. Speaking of which, you also have various effects by donating to SGDQ for Dr. Zilla Borders. Okay, so donation, Brodia, 5,000, 10,000, 25,000, and now we multiply it by seven. Whoops. So the arena is a If you donate mm -hmm. to GDQ, you can win her very own axe. So be sure to do that. Woo! All right, so reclassing is a feature in this game, but in order to reclass to certain classes, you need to have the appropriate proficiencies. So, and, so what Clarice is going to do is do, 
enter the arena with Alir to fight with match. Leaf, because Leaf gives a bazillion I proficiencies, Leaf. but the one we I are interested in this is the knife proficiency, because we want How to reclass Alir into a knife-based class in a few chapters. Um, on top of this, since we're in the arena anyways, um, she's going to go ahead and, since her bo she has enough bond level with Marth, Claris is going to go ahead and inherit Avoid plus 10 and Perceptive. Avoid plus 10 is self-explanatory. Perceptive gives you about 15 or more Avoid, depending on your speed, when you initiate an attack. Both skills are incredibly important for reliability, because the, str the general strat for Alir to survive in the late game is just dodge them out. And even with these skills, there are certain chapters that get really scary, even with these skills. So now it's just some shopping. We're buying Revorp and a bunch of tonics. Yeah, so the Revorp staff, um, it makes a return in this game. I think it was first introduced in Thracia 776. It teleports the use staff user five tiles in this game, which is kind of nice. Um, if your staff user is competent, they can like, teleport away five tiles, which is not as good as infinite range like in the Super Nintendo games, but like, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Um, so Claris is going to give Micaiah to Vander, who is the Jagan of this game, kind of a turn for an early pre-promoted unit who kind of falls off late game. Uh, when you have, normally, J Vander can't use saves, but if you are, have Micaiah as your emblem, you can use up to C saves. So if Vander's going to have the rewarp staff and be able to use that. Yes. All right. Whoops. Whoops. Yes, here. So we're work we, we warping Vander. Here. Wait, where did and you get that extra range? How why did are they over why, here? How did you get Alir and Alchris yeah. there? Yeah, so Micaiah is absolutely ridiculous in this game. So... Uh, Normally, the warp and rewarp saves have moved one unit. Um, Understood. Move one range. unit, five Chest spaces. Scratch. Uh, sorry, it's hard to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, when you normally the rewarp staff has you only rewarps the user. And oh, I, I got it. Okay, cool. I didn't think I was actually going to hit level 11. <laughs> oh, nice. When you're engaged with Nikaya, that range increases by plus five, and the area of effect increases by plus one. So, Mikaya plus a rewarp staff. Gives you 10 range and includes everyone next to the user. So the re rewarp staff with Mikai lets you warp five units up to 10 tiles away. Pretty fun. Yeah, it's kind of overpowered. And one of the big reasons that the glitch we saw uh, early in the game is not actually too useful. Yeah. <laughs> also, if any Alchris fans, that's the last map for Alchris to shine in. Mark. He's done shooting down flyers. So reclassing is a feature in this game, as for most Fire Emblem games, where um, there are generally two tiers of classes, a base class and an advanced class. And currently, Alir is in a base class. So Claris is going to use a Master Seal to promote her into an advanced class. And then when you're in an advanced class, you can use a second seal to advance to reclass change into an adjacent advanced class. Uh, as long as you have the appropriate proficiencies, you can reclass into anything. And in this case, we're going to reclass her into the Wolf Knight. Woo! Yeah, it has a bunch of benefits. The most important one is <laughs> most important one is it gives her a ponytail. So yes, the ponytail is a lot more good. important than one to two range daggers with poison and six movements and um, daggers and not being broken by almost anything. Totally not broken at all. Speaking of daggers, so they make a return in this game. Uh, they have a lot of properties. Uh, they have one to two range, which means they can counterattack almost everything in the game. Very useful. Um, they inflict poison, which means when an enemy is poisoned, they take extra damage from every hit they take later on. Great for boss killing. And they're pretty accurate, and the Wolf Knight class itself has six move. The problem with daggers and the Wolf Knight class is that their might and strength is pretty bad. So the Iron Dagger we have has, what, five might? It's kind of bad. Uh, we're going to engrave the Cigarette Emblem to get, get a, one extra might and 20 avoid, so Alir becomes even more of a dodge tank. And, um, oh, nice Steel Dagger you've got there. Oh, hmm. nice steel dagger plus four you've got there, huh? I'll be here. Oh, where did you get that 16 might, one to two range weapon with 90 hit, 20 crit, 20 avoid? Yeah, so forging <laughs> on daggers gives two points of might for every level of forging. So it, that I don't think there's any other weapon type that does that. Like each le most forging most weapons give, usually gives you like one might and like five hit or something like that. With daggers, it's plus two might per level. So by forging a steel dagger. From zero to plus four, she just got, just got plus eight mites on top of it. Yeah. So 16 might weapon by this point in the game. Totally not broken. For, for reference, the sword she was using had six might. <laughs> oh, one last thing. Uh, knives cannot be broken by anything besides arts. And arts, enemies with arts almost don't exist. 
So that there, there goes all of our problems with getting broken by enemies. Ironically, this is like the one chapter steward. where it does matter. Yeah, <laughs> but, the uh, but yeah. after this one, I will basically never be broken again. Mm -hmm. Any Boucheron fans? Good job, Boucheron. He did the very important job of opening a chest for us and then Bye. died. All right, so this map is a defeat stand. multiple bosses map. Uh, we have to t take out, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Morian and Hyacinth. Yeah, yeah Morian and Hyacinth, uh, the kings of two nations. Um, and that's Hortensia yeah, right there. She's not considered a boss, even though the game clearly intends for you to bonk her. But we just skipped her with a rewarp. And you get to see the power, oh, bye, Vander. You get to see the power of the 1 to 2 range 16 might dagger on a Wolf Knight class. Yeah, fortunately, Vander gets to live due to the plot armor. So, good for him. Oh, look at all these enemies. Wonder what'll happen to them. Okay, I did not get broken, so, woo! Oh, everything died besides the boss. Good job. Yeah, uh, that just <laughs> send the leer into a bunch of enemies. Everyone dies. That's basically how things are going to go from now on. Now that I've reclassed her and given her this steel dagger. <laughs> like this is pretty much the main thing you need for mo like ninety percent of the rest of the run. Like, yeah, you'll get some stats from leveling up here and there, but like this, she's basically set for oh, the mid game at least. Yeah, so next chapter is just an escape map. We just lost all our emblems, so all of them are gone. Yep, no more Micaiah, no more Sigurd, no more Roy, no more Marth, no more Selica. Wait, did I say Selica? Selica? Yeah. I, I didn't forget anyone, did I? I don't think you did. No, I don't think I did. But right. if you think we forgot someone, feel free to donate $7.76 to remind us. Our foes are strong. So uh, it, this map takes away the time crystal, so if I die, that's not great, because that, 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 I to redo the entire map, but after it fine. Oh, I got a crit. That's nice. cool. So I just learned to skill hobble, which isn't very useful. It's just uh, when I attack an enemy, they have oh. minus two move, which is useful in one chapter very late. But we just got Lucina. Let's go. Come and face me. So yeah, we just got Ivy and her retainers, and they're all really good units. We also got Lin and Lucina as the emblem rings. MVP Lucina! Woo! We do have a $7.66 and uh, 66, uh, 66 cents related dono, if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go we've, for it. We've got a donation from Canthia that's actually $76.60 that's saying... Donating $76.60 for my favorite Fire Emblem game, uh, Thrasia 776. Question for the runner and couch. Who is your favorite Fire Emblem? Also, where's the donation incentive to pet the Sami? <laughs> All right, so we're doing some inventory management here. Um, Clarissa is going to go ahead and promote Ivy into her exclusive advanced tier class, which Ivy's not going to be used too much for combat, but she's going to be pretty important for some utility. Um, this promotion is primarily for plus one movements. And this is kind of a chill chapter after like the climax, one of the climaxes of the story that just happened. Um, we're about to enter Solm, which is kind of a desert-based um, nation. Um, so this upcoming map is a route chapter, which means defeat all enemies on the map. Uh, and Alir's of course going to do the majority of the work, but Bune is going to help out clear out a few enemies at the top. And Ivy's also going to help Alir out here and there. And while we're at it, um, we can really quickly talk about hit rates in this game, because this game has an interesting hit rate system where the game lies to you about hit rates. Yep. Yeah, so um, if the hit rate is below 50% or lower, the game is not lying to you. It is actually correct. So a 40% hit rate is a 40% chance. Um, but if it's above 50%, you have this beautiful formula. Let's see if I can get it up. Beautiful formula where X is displayed hit, you have X plus X Ready times negative 2 over 15 of sine X, pi, X pi over 50. Very beautiful formula, isn't it? That is the hit rate formula for Fire Emblem Fates, Fire Emblem Echo, Shadow of Lenshi, and this game. And what does that mean in practice? Uh, you have this beautiful chart right here. You kind of see like a curve right here. That basically means that hit rates above 50% are a bit higher than what the game tells you. In other words, a chain, if a chain attack is 80% displayed hit rate, the actual hit rate is exactly 90.14% chance. Um, and, if a, and if an attack has 90% hit chance, it's actually around 98 point, like 
percent? I don't remember off the top of my head. So if you ever felt cheated by missing a 90% hit, feel worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oh, and I was thinking of two iron system. Yeah, it's 97.05% 97 in this game. I'm just going to pretend I did all that math in my head, and I totally didn't just memorize the table. <laughs> Let's go, man. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah, map just happened. <laughs> so uh, one of the units we just recruited, uh, his name is Pendreo, and he, he's a party animal, literally. Um, that's literally his ability name. Um, he's a staff user, and he comes conveniently with a warp staff, which the game actually kindly points out to you. He's like, yeah, I got a warp staff. I'll just teleport you across the desert if you need to. And it does, it's a similar staff to the rewarp staff, except you warp a target up to five tiles away instead of the user. And you're going to see that in action at the start of this map. This is a fog of war map. Um, so as a reminder, we cannot move into tiles we don't see, unfortunately. And we have a long distance to cross because we need to get to the bottom right corner of this really big map to defeat two bosses with a Leer. We also just got a, a new group of units. Um, most of them, are really, they're not really going to be used. Understood. Here's a warp staff. Yeet. I can fight. One of the interesting things, so this is the map that introduces Ike from Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. And his ability is to command. tank and destroy um, terrain. It's not going to be that important in this map, but Ike will be very useful in a few maps from, from here on out. Um, we also got Marin, who is a wolf knight, who uh, kind of just joined us with literally better stats than Alir. Is Zalkov supposed to die there? No, he was not. Uh... I've hmm. been. Oh, curious. he got crit. That's cool. Ow. Fire on them, crits. When you get crit, when, by the way, uh, when you crit or get crit, you take or deal times three damage in this game. But there's a way to negate crit usually because the luck stat negates crit. Yeah, yeah, that was very unlucky to get crit. <laughs> you know what the chance is? Like, I mean, imagine it's in the single digits, I guess. Uh, yeah, definitely in the single digits. Probably okay. very low single digits. Uh, Fire Emblem. Does, does that get a? That's never happened before. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was literally a route by Kuo, who he made a route where he used Marin, the other wolf knight that just joined us, as a carry for the rest room, because we've just been pumping all these stats into Alir, and she's really good at this point, but Marin just joins with basically better stats than Alir, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of important benefits to continuing to focus on Alir instead of switching to Marin at this point. All right, so we finally reached the bosses, and we just camp here and hope we kill them. Oh, bye. Yeah, uh, we don't need her anymore, so yeah. Oops. So we just, whoops. We just basically wait a few turns, and then the map ends. Whew. And yep. Oh, oh, not not yep yet. <laughs> a bit to go. Now yeah, we go. okay. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think we have some time for some more donations for the next map. Absolutely, Clarence. We've got a $50 donation from Armaseal that says, leaving a donation and amazed at Clarice with her wonderful run of Fire Emblem Engage. Chefs, engage! <laughs> We've also got a $100 donation from Akaj that says, Hiya Papaya. Hiya Papaya. And then we got a $250 donation Please. from Soren that says, let's go Clarice. Good luck with the run. What is everybody's favorite Fire Emblem, and why is it Radiant Dawn? <laughs> Radiant Dawn fans, let's go! It's three houses, I'm sorry, it just is. If you like, ask, ask me for my favorite Fire Emblem, I'll probably list like seven of them in the same tier and, not, and unordered. <laughs> and just avoid, it just avoids conflict, okay? Like, my, my favorite's three houses. And Radiant Dawn, and Sacred Stones, and Awakening, and a lot of other games, and so on. The list goes on. All right, so this is a defeat all bosses chapter. We have, I think, five bosses to Four. defeat. Four. Yeah. Um, and they're, most of them are aggressive, except for Hortensia, um, who will not be aggressive until we engage attack her. And we have Lin as our engagement, who is normally a speed demon. She has Astra, which allows you to attack a unit up to 10 tiles away. But if you are a covert class, like, like a thief or an archer, you have 20 range with Astra, Astra instead. Zelkov no is a thief. So Zelkov will be able to reach Hortensia yes. across the map with Astra, like that. 
And yeah. now Hortensia's AI is activated, and she will be more aggressive coming up. Also, I think he took out an entire health bar, too. Yep. So yeah, easy. Ivy's role is to get a really important chest um, treasure in the upper right corner. So she has Ike engaged. And what Ike does when you is that he reduces your avoid to zero, so you're going to get hit by almost everything. But you take half damage from everything, and if you are at 75% HP or lower, you have plus 7 defense and plus 7 res. In other words, Ike is a complete tank. So Ivy will not die to anything, basically. Yeah, there's an archer that has 4% crit against her. Even if the archer uh, lands that 4% crit twice, she will still survive. Yes, that has happened. <laughs> the ultimate tanking emblem. All right, so all the bosses besides Hortensia are defeated. Uh, Hortensia is really scary because she has the Byleth um, emblem ring and Byleth, and she also I has the Luin and the Sword of the Creator, which are effective against dragons. Alira is a dragon. Even if you reclass her out of her dragon print, dragon um, classes, she's still identified as a dragon. So like, anything that's dragon effective. One well, HP. Yep, one Woo! HP right there. And the problem with Hortensia is that I'm her hit rate you. sucks. But she has Divine Pulse, which re-rolls your hit, and she has over 50% chance to hit you anyways. Yep. And you saw in a demonstration of Hortensia hitting um, Alir anyways and surviving at 1 HP. And this is with all the avoid base skills that we've inherited on her. So just very scary in general. Yep. Probably some uh, time for some more donations right now. Yeah, you know the drill. Absolutely. We've got a $500 donation Woo! from Moose that says, Waiter, I'll have a blindfolded Malekith and Super Mario Maker 2 Versus so, uh, Showcase, please. Everybody, please make sure that when you go to donate, scroll on down to incentives. We are still a fair chunk away from Elden Ring, blindfolded Malekith, uh, and the Super Mario Maker 2 Versus Showcase. So please make sure when you go to donate, select that incentive and add it. That's super important before you finish your donation. Right. So we just got the Byleth Emblem Ring. We're not going to use Byleth for a bit, but he will be very important later okay. on. Um, for now, we are entering the next map, which introduces Seedal. Whoops. Ah, um, menu. Menuing is difficult. Menuing is the most purest form of speedrunning. So yeah, we're just buffing Alir a lot because she needs it. And we also actually got Hortensia in our party. She's going to be our main staff user in the late game, but not immediately yet. Because Hortensia has an ability that gives her plus one range on healing saves, which includes rewarp and warp. Don't ask. Makes sense. Yeah, make, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, Seedal is a dancer who um, we can real recruit. We're forced to recruit in this chapter because the objective of this chapter is unique. It's escape with Seedal. Dancers allow another unit to move again. If you've ever seen a Fire Emblem speedrun before, you know how powerful dancers are in general. We're not actually going to use him to dance a single time in this map, just due to the objective of the map requiring him to just stay behind. But we, right. it's not as easy as us warping to the end, because the end is blocked off by closed passages. So we need someone to go through this entire maze to break open doors and reveal the escape point so that Seedal can escape. So yeah, Seedal's that um, fancy oh, dancer at the top set. there. Good job, Zelkov. So we just get Corrin. Yep. We're not going to use Corrin at all this chapter, even though the game's like... It, the we Korn, do, we do briefly. Oh, we do, we do, yeah. So Corrin's um, niche in this game, who comes from Fire Emblem Fates, her ability is to manipulate terrain, which includes clearing out the miasma, the purple miasma on the map. Uh, and she also allows you to use Dragon Vein, which basically creates a bunch of tiles in front of you, depending on your class type. In Seedal's case, it's create ice tiles, because he's a chi adept type. Um, and you'll see that in action soon. But yeah, we're just kind of plowing through with Lear. We can, I think we can squeeze in one quick donation. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, We've got a $38 donation from Virxel that says, Hi, a papaya to Claris and everyone's favorite cat, Masta, on the couch. Holy bro, holy. Uh, wait, that's only... Uh, yeah, we have time for another. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've got a $50 donation from Happenstance and Roxapop that says, Hi, a papaya to Claris in the couch. This is already a wild run, and I can't believe the estimate for the whole run is the average time it took me to finish one map. Good luck on the runs and the RNG. Everybody, keep the high of papayas coming. Oh, here's a warp. Yeets. Woo. And Seedal is going to be surrounded by enemies, but again, here's Dragon Vein. He's going to block off some details so that most of the enemies can't reach him. The boss, who has an extra health bar, moves out of the way to try I to get Seedal. But that also just clears the path, so Seedal can just escape. 
Start to chapter 15. Do you have time for a donation? Yep. All right, we've got a $35 donation from Lemon Carrots that says, Zelkov, my beloved. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Zelkov. I love both thieves a lot. They're great. Chapter 16, which one is this? That's the beach map, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the beach map. All right, so we're going to He does get... not run the game, so... Yeah, I, I don't run the game. So I know, shocker. <laughs> uh, Claris has, like, done a lot of the routing work for this game, so shout-outs to Claris here. There's been a lot of other runners who have been, like, putting in work and trying out their own different routes, um, helping out as well, um, and ultimately the routes that you see are a community effort. Um, I'm, if I feel like if I start listing names, I'm just going to forget someone, and that will feel, I'll just feel really bad, so I won't, but... Yeah, there, there's a lot. Of, there's this all a community effort that you see today, right here today. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, talk about the show, I guess. Yeah. So this map has a gimmick where uh, the, the tides go up and down. If the tides are up, you can't cross the um, beach very quickly, which is really slow. So right there, you just saw the um, path yes. with the monster blocked off. Uh, we don't want to wait on those cycles. So what we're gonna do is do a warp with a leer to to skip oh, one of the paths, so we this. don't have to wait. We do need to kill the monster, and this is where we get introduced to Eriko from Sacred Stones as the emblem ring. So Rosado, who is very cute by the way, uh, is going to use twin strikes while next to Alir, who and gets a plus three attack buff from Alir because Alir's personal skill buffs adjacent units. All right. And now Alir just skips the first water path. Well, that's some good luck. And this is a defeat all bosses chapter, so we have to take out Marnie and Mavier. Um, and when engaged to Ike, Ike has, gives you a hammer, which are effective against armored units. Oops. Marnie is armored. And Clarice is using great ether here, and that ability basically makes it so you camp and just tank everything that hits you. And then on the start of player phase, you hit everything around you for massive damage. I'll do my and best. also heal yourself. And you can do that with a hammer, which just destroys Marnie. And now we just have to take out Mavier, who has who is on his last health bar. And there we go. Cool. Go Pepsi Man! Woo! So do we have any more donations? Absolutely we do. We've got a $10 donation from Shining Espion that says, it's always the most exciting to see Claris doing a run at GDQ. Hope you have a great run, Claris. We're all cheering for you. Also, I'll donate another $10 if you meow at the next cat you see. Or if you make here? the cat meow, I think they mean. That's a pigeon. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much for that donation. Thanks, Kara. All right, so the next... So chapter 17, which is coming up, is kind of like the climax of the mid-game. Where it's supposed to be kind of this... This entire town is on fire, lit up by, like, the four hounds, the main antagonists, um, by, like, Mavier and Marnie. We haven't heard those names before. And Ze and the other bad guys. Zephyr and Gris. Yes, Zephyr and Gris. And Hyacinth, who's zombified, and Vale. Um, and they all have emblem rings, the first six that we've been using. Um, and we just got the other six after losing our initial rings. So this is kind of supposed to be, like, a showdown between your six emblem rings versus their six emblem rings. Um, and so we have to defeat all six bosses in this map. Five of them are on the left side of the map. But conveniently enough, Gris who is on the upper right corner of the map. He's really out of the way, but we normally would have to like commit a unit to taking him out, but he just moves towards he us does. anyways, so we can kind of just ignore him, and he'll eventually come to us and die. Yeah, so we just do a 6 v one I switched for weapons somehow. That was not supposed to happen. I'm not... Oh, it's because I accidentally selected the engage attack and that changed her equipped weapon. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. By the way, we're still using that 16 my steel dagger. So Marnie is really annoying here because she has the Roy emblem. And the Roy emblem when engaged gives you holdouts, which mean, makes it so that if your HP is above 20%, you will survive any blow at one HP that will kill you otherwise. There are healers around her, and she's just a giant tank here, so oh, we just need to make sure that we keep wailing on her, killing any healers that would heal her. Um, past the 28% HP mark. Oh, nice crit. Wow, nice. 
So I think Arnie's down. Five to, five to go, I think. Yep. Whoops. That's uh, perception. Okay. Woo, heal, because I can potentially take a ton of damage this turn. And this is with Ike, by the way, where we take half damage from everything. Uh, no, oh, we're not. Oh, you're using? We're not oh, you're not engaged. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, Mavier is down. Uh, there is Effia. So a lot of the bosses here will try to use their engage attack, such as Override, if they can reach you at one range, which is why Claris is carefully positioning Alir into the two range, so that they will not engage attack her. Yeah, like Veil doing an engage attack would be terrifying. So she just doesn't do it if we're two range away from her instead. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully the chapter ends this turn. Fails defeated. Yep. You have Hyacinth and Zephia Zep Zep left. Yeah, we just hit level 20. That's our final level up on a Leer for the run. Mm -hmm. Yep, there we go. Eight turns. 1v6. So, uh, so level 20 is the cap, as Claris mentioned. And we can get more stats if we want to by using a second skill to loop back to level 1, which sounds like a good idea. Uh, but this is a speed run, and level ups cost a lot of time. Um, so we don't want to do that. We, and the stats that we have currently are just enough to get through the rest of the game. Yeah, so we, we just got Sigurd back. Yeah, uh, there, there, there was no second emblem ring that we just got back. We just got Sigurd. Load! But, but of course, um, if you think we forgot anyone, feel free to donate $7.76 again. Leaf. Or even better, 77 wait, $77.60. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go to the full seven hundred and seventy-six dollars, yeah, we're not yeah, going to stop you. We're, we're not going to stop you. Go ahead. And we want to hear a seven hundred seventy-six dollar donation. All right. So this is a pretty cozy map after that really big map we just did. Uh, so we the bot. This is a defeat boss map. It's a boat map, and this is the first time we're going to see Byleth in action. Uh, Byleth has the Goddess Dance ability, which refreshes units. Um, around the user and gives different buffs as well, depending on the class type of the user. Gold Mary is a unit um, who is a backup class with Byleth, and backup classes give plus four strength to whoever they dance for. And that's going to be important for this map because the boss is tanky, so Claris is going to move Alir close to the boss first with Sigurd. I can fight. Meaning, again, we have yes. giant movement again. Here's the dance. And Alir has like a bazillion move plus four attack, and we just reached the boss. So it's, I have to get a critical hit to KO her on enemy phase, so this... Oh, oh nice! It. Woo! <laughs> uh, one, one whole turn. I know, nice one turn. So that boss is the same boss from Chapter 3, by the way. Yeah. I, I don't think they even really mention it. They're just there. Probably have some time for... Have times for some more donations at the moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We get a $25 donation from the Rude Sandstorm that says donating during the Psalm chapters because the battle music is, as Yunaka would hopefully say, a zappity zap bibbity bop. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a $50 donation from Jam Losing the Game, which is Chef's Engage. Ooh. So. Engage. Uh, this has two bosses we have to defeat, uh, Mavir and Marnie. Um, Never heard of them. I feel like they come out a few times before. Eh, no, I think this is our first time we have to defeat them. Anyway, uh, it's only two bosses, but they are, they are very difficult to take out. Yeah, so Marnie is really far away, and, will you, and again, she has Roy again. Um, so what Clarissa is going to do is use a 20 range Astral Storm to aggro Marnie towards us. Meanwhile, there's a lot of Miasma. Miasma is really bad for us because Miasma gives us minus 20, minus 20 defense and res if we're in it, and gives enemies plus 20 defense and res. That's a lot. So we're going to use a Maybe. Fire Orb to clear out some of the um, Miasma that we're going to fight on. We just used Zalkov with um, Lin's Astra right. to aggro Warney, and now we're getting ready to get a big boss kill set up soon. Clear out a few enemies that are going to get in the way. The choice is yours. There's the old dance. Yeah, so uh, chapter 17, we were able to do a Lear solo. We very much cannot do that. We so gotta have close. lots of people to help out this side of the round. Yeah, so making sure that we player phase and use all the units we can to take out Marnie and Marvier is very important because of all the other enemy units that might get in the way instead of just trying to bunker. Ah. Oh, wait, so. no, I'm supposed to just wait. 
Right. Yeah, so wait. <laughs> Kanketsu here has the Corn Emblem, which as we mentioned is lets you Dragon Vein, but another ability Corn has is um, Torrential Roar, which uh, hits the enemies in a line and also decreases their avoid with Water Terrain. It also immobilizes them with, um, what's it called? Dreadful Aura, Dreadful Aura. So he just used it there, do auto battle. So now Mavier and Marty cannot move this turn, which is really good. Yeah, we do absolutely do not want Marty to be moving. She will use Blazing Lion if she moves. We do not want that to happen. Let's hear it. So Saphir is going to move there to block off the auto battling AI. So that to make sure that we get the Kagetsu I have an IV to finish off the bosses appropriately. And there we go. And we just got Roy and Mikaya back. Uh, both very important emblems for pretty much the rest of the run. Yep. If, if you remember from early on, Mikaya gives you, when you engage with Mikaya, you get plus five staff range and plus one area of effect. We haven't talked about Roy too much. Roy, um, to he gives you plus Sigurd. one move to mounted classes. Mikaya. And he also, when engaged, gives you a, a plus five level buff, which is really important for end game bosses because we need the, we need the staff buff. Um, so remember that, remember that glitch that we had before? I think, yeah. It has. I, and one of the requirements was that you need to have plus extra movements when engaged. Um, Sigurd's problem is that he doesn't really enhance um, Alir's combat it, itself that much, even though he's amazing for mobility. But Roy does, and he gives plus one move, which is all you need to do this coming up soon. In fact, that's exactly what you need to do the glitch. Yep. <laughs> So Fog of War, this is a bit of a gimmick in this map. Gris has three health bars. We're going to use Illum, which uh, basically lights up the entire map thanks to Hortensia and Mikaya. Do a quick warp. Uh, Gris's position is random um, at the Here start. Goes. But first of all... we. <laughs> oh. Bring it on. There's Gris. So once you take out his first... No, oh, he oh. got the 4% oh. crit! <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Ciao. Ciao. Yeah, you do that. You just burn our hands and hope for better results. That's what you do if something goes wrong. 4% 80 80% it. <laughs> All right, there we go. So once you take out his first health bar, he'll warp back to the top center of the map, which... Oh, hey, Alir's up there. Convenient. We're, are, we're gonna, can we kill two health bars in one turn? Oh, we just did. How? Yeah, he has the ability Echo, uh, thanks to Emblem Celica. And Echo lets you attack twice uh, at half damage each. And so he just attacks you twice and loses both his health bars <laughs> before any other enemy can move. So, yeah, pretty easy. We're, we're not going to see him again, are we? Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not. Um, probably a donation or two would be good now. I got you covered. We've got a $25 donation from Farside that says, thank you to everyone that's part of the GDQ team. Been around for over 10 years, and these events are something to look forward to. Super hype, super fast runs by some of the kindest people in the gaming community. Much love to the staff, runners, crowd, and chat. And then I've also got a $50 donation from Kittymon that is going <laughs> stare silently and menacingly at Kirby Master. Our favorite cat, Kitty Mon. Th this game has cats, did you know that? It also has dogs and pigeons. And I think you can adopt sheep, too. There's a lot of animals you can adopt in this game. I've got a 776-related dono for you if you'd like one. <laughs> okay. I squeeze it in. All right, we've got a $7,760 oh <laughs> donation. <laughs> From the Yeti, which says, hey all, Yeti here. Roy's our boy, and we like Ike. But Pepsi Man is the true hero of this story. Um, so we won't commentate this chapter. I'll, we'll, let it, we'll let it speak for itself first before explaining it. The oh no, not a yours. rework stat. Yeet. So dance, re uh, rework, Give dance, rework, boss. nerf boss with Corin. Yep. All right. Lear attacks the boss. Bonk. Two health bars left. 
cause, Vance. One health bar left. Dance. GG. Yeah, so we just warp 20 tiles across the map and attack the boss four times. <laughs> easy one turn. E easy, easy one turn. Trivial. Yeah. However, this next chapter is not remotely trivial. It's the most complicated chapter in the entire run. Yeah, so a lot of event stuff just happened. Alir just died, literally, but she got revived as, like... Yeah, she is a corrupted dragon. Pepsi Man now. Yeah, she is a corrupted Pepsi Man. Um, so this map is really complicated. This is one of those maps where you have to do two maps in a row, and everyone who deployed in the map we just cleared is forced to play in this ne next map coming up. So we just lost all our 12 Emblem Rings again, but we need to revive them, collect them, and then route the map. And this is where Alir, having Alir as our carry is really handy because Alir is the only character in the game who can reactivate all the emblem rings and revive them. So what Clarice needs to do is clear out as many enemies as possible on the side, which is what Mavier, who we just got, is going to do. Move Here Alir goes. into three, a minimum of, maximum of three tiles away from any of the flashing emblem rings, which revives Mavier them. Reporting. And then we also need to talk to every single revived emblem ring with any unit. Stage is so this is a pretty complicated map, and there's a lot of dangerous units that Alira is constantly at risk of dying. Even though she's capped out, she has a void plus 10 and perceptive Carry and just me. giant stats, she can still die if she gets hit too much. And there's not much you can do about it. So here's hoping. We also just got Vale, who's kind of um, really useful. Just She uses tomes and knives, and she has a very high magic stat and has really competent offensive stats for this point in the game. So she's actually going to be very helpful. So move our fires, flyers closer and heal Veil a bit. You know, a you know a chapter is scary if a speed run heals our units, because you almost never heal units in speed runs, Fire Emblem. Speed ring, activate those emblems. They still need to be talked to, though. There is a chance Veil can die here, and unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. I basically... Actually, I think she might no be okay. Now that I look at it. Hopefully, Mavir doesn't. <laughs> uh, oh, did you know you used a smash attack? Good job. Okay, he's fine. Everything's fine. This is Whoa. fine. This is not scary at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alir's totally fine, which is very unusual. Yeah, like, I think Clarice mentioned once that on this turn, Alir went for full HP to zero on the next enemy phase. Like, that can happen. This is how scary this map is. Yes. 2 HP, it's, it's, it's okay. This is fine, this is fine. Personally, I'm a big fan of how much of Claris's routing is based around routing this map. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, healing up. So we've revived every single ring. We just need someone to talk to every single one of them and then also clear out all the remaining enemy units. There will be reinforcements at the top. Oh, they'd already spawned, yep. So Mafia is going to go ahead and take care of them. Uh, his, concept, his personal skill is really nice in this case because it gives him plus two defense when he waits, which lets him survive in this case. Good job, Ivy. Count on me. We we'll just wait again to activate his ability again. Oh. Okay. Talk to this last group with Alir. Ivy will talk to one more. Hopefully the map will be over. If it's not, yeah. Uh, yeah then... I think there was an enemy range up there I saw. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, you didn't have to rewind. That's a huge plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I I've seen Clara's practice this chapter. It's, it can go so wrong my, everywhere. My PB I got yes, yesterday yes, morning. Yesterday morning lost 40 seconds from Alir dying. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that chapter is very difficult and random. So yeah, I think Claris mentioned there are two really scary maps in the run early on. Chapter 3, which is the one with the Lance Flyers, and this one that we just did. Yeah. But the rest of the run is like relatively smooth sailing in terms of reliability. Boy, ready. Oh yeah, we just got all 12 yeah. Emblem Rings back. So yeah, we're kind Sir of OP Sigurd. again. Marth. And this is all pretty Silica. much set up yes. for the rest of the run. Leaf to battle. Lynn. Wait, where'd you get that Leaf guy? Sir Byleth. Oh, probably for that donation. Oh, yeah, that, yeah that's $7,760 that's donation from the Yeti. Thank you very much. Right. 
So I think we can squeeze on a quick donation before the next map coming up. Yeah. Got you covered. We have a $50 donation from Pascal that says, thank you for this great event and thank you to everyone who makes this possible. Probably another. All right, we got a $25 donation from Pumpkin Power that says, this has been one of the best SGDQs I have ever seen. I have been loving the love and support of the community in these hard times for many members. Never forget, trans rights are human rights. Less than three. Less than three indeed. So I'm doing a bit of weird uh, stuff here. Uh, that, will, that just sets up my unit order for the entire rest of the game. So. This, Alir's right. position is terrible and, and literal opposite end of the two bosses in the upper left corner. So rather than trying to re-warp around, we're going to yeet. Woo! Woo! Hello there. Yeah. Biggest use of the glitch in the run um, right at the very end, basically. That's the last time I'm going to use it. And like, I, don't I think I got the crit. The, the old strat before the glitch was found, oh, it was so slow. Oh my god. Just because, like, Alir's just forced in a terrible spot, and you have to use so many tools to try to get her up to the bosses. Yeah, and, like, you have to waste a lot of time warping her up there, and anyone who helps out with the warp is going to die. It's just, it's not good. But... Surely this is the last time we see Gris and Death yet, right? Yes. Okay. We're free. We're free. So that's an Alir solo. The next three chapters, the last chapters in the game, very much are not Alir solos. We're going to have Vale to help out. You can count on Vale. Agree? Yep. So we, uh, we unlock the Engage Plus mechanic. Uh, so Alir can choose to, uh, well, Alir is now Emblem Alir. So Emblem Pepsi Man can now uh, engage with anyone <laughs> she wants. Emblem Pepsi Man, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, yeah. Pepsi Man is an emblem ring. The legendary 13th emblem ring. How heard it here, folks. Yeah, so... Uh, it has a bunch of benefits uh, doing Engage Plus. Uh, shoot, I have to exit it out. But back to the map, I forgot to do <laughs> Oh, the supports, right? Yeah, I... Well, it's okay. We can take some time to explain Engage Plus. Um, there's just so many things, too, so I'll probably forget something, but, like... Uh, your, your bond level with the engage Alir depends on your support level, which is why having a C support between Vale and Alir is important. Um, and when you ha engage plus, you all have access to Dragon Blast and Bond Blast, which are very powerful engage attacks that depend on both your strength and magic. And Vale um, has really competent stats for this point in the game and a very high magic stat, so she's going to be very helpful as a secondary combat unit to help Alir out. There's a lot, a lot of other benefits to um, Engage Plus. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head because there's just way too many of them. Um, but A big one is effectiveness against Fell Dragon enemies. Two of the uh, three chapters have Fell Dragon bosses coming up. Mm -hmm. all right. So this map has a gimmick where avalanches occur like every two turns, I think. Uh, for, I've got this. Spoiler alert, it's not going to matter. Don't worry. Understood. Yeah, there's also a 20 turn it time limit. Foretold. I wonder okay. if we're going to meet that. I, I think we'll be fine. Probably. 22, close enough. So now we're in position, so... Mikaya. Rewarp. Yeet. Dance. Another very important part of the Gage Plus, we got uh, Alir and Veil vale to see support, which gives us Bond Forger. Bond Forger gives plus 20 hit in the void. <laughs> To help. Plus 20 hit is massive in this case because this Alir, who is the boss of this map actually, is very dodgy. So we really want the plus 20 hit. Uh, and Marin, who is a cavalry class, will use Byleth's Goddess Dance. And when you're a cavalier class, haunted class, you get plus 10 dexterity to whoever you dance for. That is plus 20 hits. And that is a huge amount of reliability buff. On top of that, Marin has a personal skill. Where oh, she missed! <laughs> Of course! <laughs> this is the first time I've had that happen. Well, that's never yes. happened before. Yes, that's never there happened before. So what's the hit rate on that? Uh, 86. 86. Uh, that's probably like a 95% chance to hit, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. 
So I think this is the one case where female Alir has a benefit over male Alir because Marin, who is our dance, goddess dance user, has a personal skill where if she's adjacent to two female units, then uh, those units will get a plus, I think it's plus five hit bonus? It's, yeah, plus, plus five, five hit. hit and avoid. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, we missed anyways, but, you know, it happens. It's not 100%, so... Maybe we would have missed the second attack, too, if we didn't have the <laughs> It's possible that with Melee, we would have missed two attacks there instead of just one. All right, so, two more chapters to go. Uh, quick donation, maybe? Absolutely. We've got a $250 donation from Anonymous that says, Hiya Papaya, loving this Fire Emblem run. Only downside to speed in this game is not being able to listen to the Four Hounds battle theme for too long. Such a fantastic <laughs> song. It's pretty great. Yeah. I mean, we, I do, like, cause it to start playing turn one by attacking them from across the map a few times. So. All right, so this map has a gimmick where you're yes. split into two parties and you're supposed you to kind of reunite you. through a maze. I'll do my best. Um, if you, if you remember what happened last map, you know the drill. You get to enjoy this music that doesn't get interrupted by enemy face music. My turn. Oh yeah, by the way, as a reminder, Hortensia has a personal skill that gives her plus one range with healing saves, which includes the warp and reach. Is mine. So it matters in this case. Yep. Uh, it was important here and uh, the previous chapter as well. Let's do this. All right. So start taking out the boss, who is Lumera. I, I, I did the auto battle, but this stage takes so long to actually act in auto battle that it didn't actually do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> okay, so attuned is another benefit from Engage Plus, where if you activate it, you the other side of the Engage Plus support, and in this case, Alir, gets plus five to every stat, which is ridiculous. So we have an Alir who just has a giant plus five stat buff to every stat. Dance for Alir. Um, Vale's gonna go ahead and I think Dragon Blast. So now oh, we all have one. We only have one health bar left on Lumera. But problem, Alir can't reach Lumera at one range. So what are we gonna do? Use the warp staff. One retile. Make way. Make way for a Bond Blast and GG. So. Oh, did you remember the speed tonics, or are you... Yeah. Okay. So we only have one map left in this run. Uh, so this is the last opportunity to squeeze in a quick donation or two over the next set of load screens. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got a $5 donation from Saren Tonin that says, It's tea time. Chefs are killing it on the run in commentary. So happy to see Fire Emblem this year. Mark the run on my Google Calendar because it's extra special, less than three. And then we've also got a $5 donation from Vermilion that says, watching from the crowd, shout outs to Claris with this amazing run and Kirby on the mic. Oh, and also Three Houses is the best fire emblem, and it's not even close. Agreed. Woo! Woo. Reminder, you, can, you have a chance of winning the Edelgard's Axe if you donate at least 250, I think. I don't remember off the top of my head. Correct. A, uh, it would be cumulative, but over the course of the event, but $250 will get you entered into the Fire Emblem Edelgard Axe. Yeah, Claris is doing a little bit of last-minute setup here. So to start the last map, we have to return to Somniel here. It's not accessible through the world map, so we have to go up here, talk to Mars, and be like, are you ready for the final battle? Yes. One, all right. So this last map coming up has two parts to it. We have to take out Sombron in human form. And the easiest way to do that is to get Sombron to come to us. And yeah, you haven't seen this in a while, but Claris is going to manipulate the AI into having him attack Alir, because again, the AI really likes prioritizing attacking units where they can chain attack. So Claris is going to try to get Sombron in a position where there's another enemy unit of a backup class next to Alir. And you'll see that in action coming up. Lots of cutscenes here. Yeah, the final of battle has to be very epic Pardon and all that. Me. Here goes. Engage plus. One, one thing to note, uh, the when we finish this part of the map, the positioning of every oh, unit okay. determines... Oh, I can't, okay, I can't actually do the, um, the chain attack thing since she crit everyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, crit Sabra the first time, so sure, good, you good know Good job, Alir. Can't, can't manipulate enemies into chain attacking if there are no enemies. 
Yeah, so the positioning of the that we end this map on with all our units determines the starting position of all the units in the second phase. So Claris has to be wary of that as she finishes off Sombron here. So for the last phase, we have to defeat Dragon Sombron, and he has a really big barrier that's really difficult to go through. So the fastest way, the only way to take out the barrier quickly is to take out the bosses on the four corners of the map, each representing their respective games or universe. Bottom left has to be taken out by Marth, or easiest to take out with Marth. Top left by uh, Celica, top it. right by Leaf, and bottom right by Sigurd. So there's Marth. Mavier reporting. Mavier with Sigurd, and override to take out the bottom right boss. Uh, time will be coming up at the end of this chapter, by the way. Mm -hmm. I can handle it. Who thinks Rosado's cute? Because Rosado's about to take out this boss. Well, after this. So that's the Celica boss with Warp Ragnarok. Where we headed? And now here's Rosado with um, quadruple hit with Leaf. And now the barrier is down. And now we just wail on this boss, hope we get lots of crits, and just go ham. No, trade, trade. So, uh, Vale is going to take the incredibly powerful Steel Dagger. Uh, need it just to finish the boss off here. Dance. Dance. We're going to do a double Von Blast. Music is a jam. Oh, it's a banger. It's such a banger. Last health bar. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> Veil punch! Veil punch, let's go! <laughs> and time is on whiteout. Yes. Time. That's Fire Emblem Engage. Do you have any shout outs, everybody? Um, do you. Hmm? Do you have any shout outs? Um, not off the top of my head. Uh, shout outs to just the speedrunning oh, really speed community as well. Um, there's yeah. a lot of people who worked on the route, as I mentioned before. Um, not just Claris, but other people. Not me. I did not run this game. Um, but the, the, what you saw here wouldn't have been possible without the community effort from everyone else. Yeah. And yep, that's all I have to say. You too? Yeah. So thanks for watching, everyone. Um, glad I could show this off. And so. Fire Emblem engage. <laughs> Fire Emblem disengage. Oh. oh. That's, that's so sad. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's keep it going for Claris for that amazing Fire Emblem engage any percent run. We've got a $35 donation from Who Grooves On that says, here's 35. That's a $5 Tears of the Kingdom tax for every day of the marathon. It's been so much fun playing while watching the marathon. Thank you all for being there all week long. Now, can we please get that Breath of the Wild blind fun run? Uh, pretty, uh, pretty please. All right, everybody, take this opportunity to drink some water, stretch, relax a little bit. We are going to head to a quick break. Please don't change that channel. We'll be right back. Oh, shoot, the game teaser's due today.
Welcome back, everybody, to Summer Games Done Quick 2023, powered by Twitch and benefiting Doctors Without Borders. We've got a $50 donation from Mappy Moo that says, I'm so sad this week is ending, but so thankful to all the staff, volunteers, runners, and everyone else who makes this event possible. Here's $50 so we can get Breath of the Wilds blindfolded to make the event last longer, and the curiosity for how you would even manage to do that. All right, we're going to pass it over really quick for an important message about Jackbox Games. Oh, shoot, the game teaser's due today. Uh, all right, guys, could you help me out a little bit here? I'll start and you just jump in wherever, okay? Vixie Text is the new way to communicate. Super good. Uh, maybe not so many goods. Don't say that. Who is gamers? All right, everyone just stop typing. Everyone stop, stop, stop. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, that, uh, don't send. Fixie text, theoretically coming to the Jackbox Party Pack 10. Embark on an unforgettable journey with Tiny Thor, the retro-inspired platformer featuring mesmerizing 16-bit arc by Hank Niebuhr. Wield the mighty Mjolnir to conquer challenging levels and epic boss battles. Coming to Steam, Epic Game Stores, and GOG on June 5th, 2023. We've got a $1,000 donation. from Odnoya BR saying, Hi GDQ, getting in my Pokedex donation to name the Scarlet Violet starter after the baddest fish type Pokemon of all time, Bulbasaur. Hooray, donating Pokedex entry number 0001. Wait, did, it, did I get that number backwards? And you're saying Bulbasaur isn't a fish type Pokemon? Oh no, what a pokey catastrophe. Well, no matter, it's all for charity. I retract my statement. I apologize. Bulbasaur isn't all that bad. Donations and fish-type Pokemon are, in fact, quite rad and very wise. Much love to all the runners and MSF. Let's keep those donations going. Yes, Chef. All right, everybody, we are ready for an interview. We've got ADEF that's going to be interviewing Mitch Riz to talk about Elden Ring. Let's hear what you got. <laughs> 